Hello and welcome to my Nomad Guide. I will be showing you how to kill Nomad in the Dominion Tower. However, I'll give you a few tips on killing him in the quest. So I do hope this helps people during the quest as well. So for the gear, you want to really focus on two things. You want to focus on high range attack bonus and then high magic absorption. Those are really the only two things that seriously matter while fighting Nomad. The magic absorption is because he often hits over 200 damage. He often hits about 700 or so damage, or in my case, 919 damage. But with the damage absorption, that goes way down into the 600s or so. So that's very helpful. And then, obviously, the other stats will kind of just come with it. You do kind of want to keep your magic defense up. So that's why I am wearing a Spectral Spirit Shield. Um, something else besides a Spectral that would be very helpful would be like a Divine or an Elysian. But I'm going to assume most people don't have those, so you don't really need them. So for the gear, I actually recommend... I would recommend um, Full Carols or Black Dragon Hide. When I first did this in the quest, I actually did wear Black Dragon Hide, and it worked out fairly well. Or if you have it, you can also wear Armadillo Armor. I might show you a few clips of me wearing Armadillo Armor while I'm doing the Devil Nomad or that for a friend. If you have it, you do want to use a Chaotic Crossbow. Or Rune Crossbow is fine. That's what I did for the Devil Nomad and stuff like that. But I got a Chaotic Crossbow this weekend, so I decided to use it. And then... Obviously, Glory would be fine over Fury. You do want an Avis device, whatever that is. You also want the two bolts. You want Ruby bolts and Diamond bolts. I find it pretty helpful to use. An Archer's Ring works here. An Archer's Ring imbued is probably better than an Onyx Ring imbued, but this is what I have. And then, obviously, I'm wearing Bearer's Gloves. It is technically possible, I think, to get the swift gloves without without doing no man but i just don't recommend it just probably go do nomad first and then come back and get all three gloves at once so just wear barrows gloves and for the inventory if you have overloads i do recommend you use them if you don't have overloads don't worry about it just don't bring any stat boosting potions. It's really not worthwhile. Because pretty much the moment you drink a stat boosting potion, you're probably going to end up brewing. And that will basically make the stat boosting potion worthless. I do bring a healing familiar. It's not really necessary. Especially for a single nomad. But for a double nomad, it can be a little bit helpful. And then also, it can be a little hard to get out. So... I don't necessarily recommend bringing one, but I did because it does help me. And then obviously I'm bringing Enhanced Excalibur to heal for my overload. If you can, do bring Enhanced Excalibur. It's not really necessary though. And then in my Tortoise, I do have just all brews. Basically you want a 3 to 1 brew to restore ratio. So I have right now 30 brews and 11 restores if you're my level you probably won't use all of these but it's just very helpful to have the next thing i'm going to talk about is nomad's attacks all of them and i'm going to do them in order of when he uses them and basically the order is always the same it goes one special attack after another there are a few where it's kind of out of order but that's towards the end or towards the middle of the kill and they're not really special attacks they're just one-time attacks so here are the special attacks so nomad has lots of different attacks the first attack you'll encounter is a magical based attack however this cannot be blocked by protect from magic and pretty much in so if you have it just pray soul split and then obviously your armor things like carols and spectral spirit shield will help reduce the damage a little bit or decrease the chances of it, you getting hit but other than that, you can't really do much about it. You can hit fairly hard, though, so just make sure you're not too low health. The first special attack Nomad uses is a 
special attack where he says, let's make things interesting, and he deploys mines all around you. There will be one small gap, though, in the mines. I highly recommend, if you're using range, to run backwards out of those mines and then continue attacking Nomad. This is because one of his next attacks is where you have to run away, and if you're outside the mines, it's very easy to get away. Make sure you're not to step on the mines, though. They drain your run energy and deal a whole lot of damage, so make sure you're not stepping on them. His next special attack, he says, you cannot hide from my wrath. When he does this, you want to run behind one of the pillars. Obviously, I'm in the Dominion Tower, so I run behind the nearest pillar. But if you're in his room, there's eight pillars. I recommend the four on the western side of the room. There's north-south, obviously. You want to be either on the north or south side, respectively, of the pillar. And you want to be on the west side of those. So like kind of the northwest part of that pillar. This will block that attack completely. Won't You won't take any damage. If you fail to do this, you can take up to 750 damage minus whatever the damage absorption is. So make sure to hide from those because they deal a lot of damage. His next attack is a attack where he says, let's see how well your instincts serve you. Basically, four nomads come out and only one of them is the real nomad. The real nomad is the one that attacks you last. Now, it can be a little hard to see sometimes. Worst case scenario, just attack each one and one hit, the other ones teleport away. But just try to figure out which one attacks you last. His next special attack is by far his most dangerous and powerful special attack. It is his max minus one special attack. He teleports to the middle of the room and he says, let's see how much punishment you can take. Then he spends a few seconds charging up and then unleashes his attack. Obviously, damage absorption does reduce the amount of damage, but make sure your health is above max. Obviously, Bruce can do this for you. And then there's a few seconds after the attack where he will not be attacking you. Use this to brew back up a little bit and then go back to attacking him. The next thing he does, this isn't really special and it's not necessarily in order of the others, but next thing he does is he will heal back to half health once he gets to a quarter health. He says, you're tougher than I thought, let's even things out. And he just heals back up to half health. Basically, nothing really changes, it's just he has more health. His final set of attacks, he says, enough, this ends now. And he comes up and starts meleeing you. Now, Protect from Melee is supposed to do a little bit of help here. It's not really that needed, though. I do recommend using Protect from Melee, though. And he just melees you for the rest of the kill. There's no more special attacks, and he just does that. It does deal lots of damage, though. So he can combo very quickly. So make sure you keep your health high and keep brewing and keep attacking. And just do your best to keep alive because you're almost done. There's only a quarter health left. And once you deal with that much damage, he's dead. So for the entire kill, basically, this is just to give you the order of the special attacks again and stuff like that and a few tips. Basically, what you want to be praying is if you have it, you want to leech all, you want to leech range, magic, and defense. Just to try to reduce the amount of damage you take as much as possible. And if you have it, soul split helps so much at this kill. Even though you could, you know, if you have rigor or something, you could use that. I would recommend soul split over rigor because it does deal a lot more damage. This is obviously the Dominion Tower as well. I am trying to help people also that are doing it in the quest. So if you are in the quest, the setup is a little bit different. You kind of come in at a different angle. Nomad kind of does different things. But for the most part, the kill is the same. Main difference is hiding behind the pillars. And basically all you do when that happens is you want to run to kind of the farther side of the pillar on, stay on the north or south, but on the farther side, away from Nomad, and that will block his 750 attack. In general, you just want to keep your brew, keep your health high, and make sure you just don't die. That's your primary concern. And then, obviously, you want to be attacking Nomad. Other than that, a few other things I would suggest. When I first was doing this, I did try using Void. I never succeeded with Void. The main reason is 
he simply deals more damage because Void has no damage absorption, even though it is a little bit more of an aggressive armor and things. So I do not recommend using Void. I do recommend using Carol's Black Dragon Hide, Armadillo Armor, or Pernix if you have it, but basically just whatever you have. Also, if you do die during the quest, obviously I'm in the Dominion Tower, so I'm safe. If you die during the quest, you do not really have to worry. Other than anything that would disappear in a grave automatically, or anything that would degrade if it was in your grave, such as Carol's armor. Your grave, though, you will respawn in Soul Wars, and your grave will be in one of the two graveyards right there. So literally, your grave is less than a minute away. So even the lowest grave, you'll be fine. And if you can, do protect your Carol's armor, or protect your... Enhanced Excalibur if you have it, or your Ava's device as these things disappear. One of the reasons I used Black Dragon Hide in the quest was because I did not want to let my Carols degrade. As obviously if you fail like three times or something and your Carols degrades each time, that does get kind of expensive to keep going back. In general, that's the armor I advise. Once you get used to Nomad, he really isn't that hard, but it does take a little while to get used to him and kind of understand his attacks and things like that and know to do the right thing. But in general, just keep trying and you'll eventually succeed. Well, thanks for watching. I do hope it helped and I hope you have success in killing Nomad. For this Wednesday's video, I will hopefully be putting together a video on the Swift Gloves. I don't know, in my last video, I talked about the Goliath Gloves and the Spellcaster gloves, but I didn't really talk about the Swift gloves that much. I went to Arma, I went used them quite a bit there, and I have quite a few clips now that I can put together and show you guys how the Swift gloves kind of work. But yeah, so subscribe for that, and I will have other videos out, and please rate and comment this video.